Starting your first LLC is a moment you're going to likely remember for many years to come. But did you know that there is more to the LLC than just filing the initial paperwork? Hi, my name is Greg Bull with StartingYourBusiness.com and I've helped a lot of new business owners make sure that they have dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's when starting a new LLC. And in today's video, I hope to make sure that you do too. All that said, I should mention that I'm not an attorney. And if you have questions or doubts about your LLC, working with a legal professional is highly recommended. To explain what needs to happen after forming an LLC, I'll give a story about an entrepreneur I know named Sarah. She had told me when she was initially forming her LLC, and like so many business owners, uh, she was filled with hope and excitement for her new business, but she was also a little nervous and unsure about what to do next because there were just so many things that she needed to do to get her business off the ground. And like a lot of new business owners, in addition to being overwhelmed by that long list of things, Sarah vaguely understood that there were some post-filing requirements, but still she didn't know what she didn't know at the time and forming an LLC was a totally new concept to her. And the state doesn't exactly give you an owner's manual to tell you all of the responsibilities that you have to take on with a new LLC. Now, it's important to note that each state is different, but I wanna go over the eight most common requirements that you may need to take after forming your LLC to ensure that your business is set up for success. One of these requirements was actually missed by Sarah too, and that jeopardized her liability protection. So, starting with number one, we have filing an initial report. Certain states require a report to be submitted within the first few months after forming an LLC. Depending on the state, this document could be called a statement of information, and typically all you're going to do with these is include the name and contact information of the members and the registered agent. Some states let you file this form at the same time as the Articles of Organization, while others require it to be submitted separately. Number two, create an LLC operating agreement. An LLC operating agreement is a legal document that outlines the governing structure of the operating guidelines of the entity, along with the responsibilities of the members. The operating agreement is especially important for a multi-member LLC, though single member LLCs can actually benefit from having one too. Only California, Delaware, Maine, Missouri, Nebraska, and New York uh, require an LLC to have an operating agreement. But even if your state does not require you to have one, it can still be beneficial because in the event of a legal dispute, an LLC with an operating agreement may have to follow generic state rules, which may or may not be in the best interest of the members. Number three is publication requirements. And this was what Sarah forgot to file. And in some states, after filing the paperwork to form an LLC, you may need to also publish a notice of the LLC's formation in a newspaper. This seems like a pretty unnecessary requirement to me, though I'm sure the newspapers love this requirement since it can be quite costly to have it run. But fortunately, only three states, Arizona, Nebraska, and New York, require running this legal notice. Now, in New York, LLCs are required to publish a notice of formation in the legal section of two newspapers that are approved by the county clerk in the county where the LLC is based. This notice has to be run within 120 days of forming the LLC for six consecutive weeks. And about one year into owning the LLC, the Secretary of State sent a notification to Sarah saying she no longer had the authority to conduct business within the state. How this impacted Sarah was that by not completing the step, she no longer had the personal liability protection of the LLC. So if the business had been sued, her personal assets would have been at risk, which is not a good situation at all. The good news is that she was able to run the legal notice and regain her status of good standing with the state, and she was back to operating as normal. Number four, obtain an EIN. An EIN is a abbreviation for Employer Identification Number, which is a unique nine-digit number that is assigned by the Internal Revenue Service to identify business entities for federal tax purposes. Multi-member LLCs and single-member LLCs with employees are required to have one. Number five, open a business bank account. One of the benefits of an LLC is separating the personal assets from the business. Opening a business bank account helps to maintain the separation by avoiding the commingling of funds. In the event of a lawsuit or audit, keeping the funds separate avoids piercing the corporate veil, and that is where the creditors can then go after the member's personal assets. Step six, obtain necessary licenses and permits. Common question, but one that is important to note is that a limited liability company is different from a business license. An LLC is the business structure, uh, which is how a business is legally organized to operate. 
while a business license is the authority from a governmental agency for a business to legally operate. And your choice of business structure won't impact the need for business licensing. Depending on your industry and where the business is located, you may need to register the business with multiple government agencies. These registrations commonly include a state or local business license, sales tax permit, building permits, professional licensing, and uh, several others. Number seven, maintain a registered agent. Every state requires LLCs to have a registered agent, which could be called a resident agent or statutory agent, depending on the state. The registered agent is a central point of contact for the LLC. The state requires one to generally be at a particular address in the state of formation during normal business hours should the Secretary of State need to contact the business or for the business to receive a legal notice. In addition to having a registered agent on the initial filing paperwork, an agent needs to be in place as long as the LLC is active. A registered agent can be the owner, if they qualify, or a paid registered agent service. And number eight, filing annual reports. And uh, this is a common requirement in most states uh, where an annual report and paying the state fee is required. The annual report confirms the continued existence of the entity and updates the contact information of the members and registered agent with the state. Most states are annual, but some states are every other year, while Pennsylvania is uh, only every uh, once every 10 years. Okay, that wraps up this video on the eight things you may have to do after forming an LLC. And like I said earlier, the, the requirements in each state are different, but if you aren't sure what is required in your state, check out our guides to forming an LLC at startingyourbusiness.com. I hope this video was helpful, but if you have more questions, please let me know in the comments or consult with a lawyer or an LLC formation service for expert guidance. Good luck on your entrepreneurial journey and hope to see you soon.